Mr. Machado. Well, I, I think this illustrates the need to make a choice and, and the policy choices that are out there. And we can talk about, we want, I mean, you have to, one of the fears the state has is the paternal decision. So if we were, who is going to go tell an RT, RD district they don't have to go to PL 8499? And if you advocate a lower standard and that lower standard creates a problem or a loss, who then takes the responsibility because they did what they were told to do? The RDs are moving forward, to, for example, to try to move the non-projects up to PL 8499 because they want to be able to ensure the participation of the federal government at a time of an event. Let me back up. On the major policy question, does the state of California presently compel all folks who own levies to maintain them at the 8499 standard? No. Okay. If they do not currently compel them, I understand why to qualify for federal emergency assistance, it's desirable for the property owner to do it. Argue the case that the state should pay for it. Oh, I, I, I'm not. I think that that's, that gets back into the concept of beneficiary pay because Well, but we've, we've already seen, and maybe it is, but then let me ask, is an 8% local cost fair? I don't know whether 8%, 25 or 50% is fair. I think that that's, that's, it ought to be, that's something that can be determined, and it can be determined politically through arbitrage and compromise. Or statutorily, or voluntarily, or a whole host of, of, of out, out there. I think what you have to ask yourselves, without imposing a state standard, is it reasonable to try to move the Delta to a PL 8499 standard? Are there property? Are there people benefits? Is there infrastructure benefits? All of that that come around that. And the conundrum I think we face is by, if we say that that's a reasonable standard, how do you do it without incurring liability by imposing it? How do you incur it by not necessarily being trapped into provide, providing all the cost associated with it? I mean, I, I think as those are very real, real concerns. But I also think that for the state to say that you know, HMP is the appropriate standard, it may not be appropriate either because it is a lesser standard. The four islands, uh, except, except different, different standard, but the four islands is an illustration of an example you might find somewhere. Right. I, and I, so how, you know, the real question is how do you encourage without obligating yourself? Well, you probably can't. I mean, I, 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 I've, I've, I've thought about this liability question for a long time, and my hunch is the more deeply we get involved in levies and setting standards, no matter what the plan says, we run into problems about potential liability. And, uh, you, know, you people have commented on SB5. Certain people a famous piece with. of legislation, <laughs> indeed. You know, one of the things that you know, you're asking me to recall my memory going back to the discussions that we had, and I think one of the monumental parts was that you know, once they adopt the plan of flood control, it sets a standard to go to 200 years, locals have an obligation because right. if they're going to put people in harm's way, they've got to protect themselves. And if they don't, then they have to have the appropriate zoning, and if they violate that, they're on their own. Um, You know, does that concept extend further in the Delta? I think there would be a lot that would argue against that. There's those that argue that well, that's why we have general obligation bonds, because we can we dedicate a portion of that for the public interest. You know, when Senator Johnston was in the legislature and I was in the lower house, we had this conversation over what should be the applicable share. Should it be... 
25? Should it be 50 or should it be 75? Uh, there was a feeling then that locals should have be paying should be paying more. That that was increased and then it was reversed. But I, the, these are this is a this is a really fundamental point in terms of where you go, how you go forward in, in the delta, and how you treat other aspects of it. I also I also think that levy standards come into play when you start talking about water reliability. Well, what what do you do? Let, let's let's just assume for the purposes of argument that the uh, the state, and we're two state agencies talking to each other, interestingly enough, but the state decides, yep, uh, we want to do standards and we understand their financial obligations. Forget the details of how much, but financial obligations. And inevitably, we'll get to the same questions that, you know, the, the levies provide benefits to water reliability, therefore the water contractors ought to pay a lot of money and the state ought to do stuff for general. But we don't have agreement on all of the issues of a comprehensive delta plan, which flood control includes, but is not limited to. And how do we, how do we get to that? Because you've essentially said in this economic sustainability plan that the only water conveyance facility, other than a 3,000 cubic feet per second somewhere that you might look at kind of sort of maybe, uh, the only other facility is the armoring concept for it. Habitat can't be as extensive as planned. I mean, that, you know, just, that's, that's overstating your, your recommendations, but I don't think it's totally unfair. How do we reconcile all of those when, when in, in cumulative total, we're talking about mm, lots of money? But that, let, let's, let's, let's look, go back then. The Delta's been evolving for 150 years. The physical structure of the Delta's been in existence uh, since the early part of the 19th century, 1900s. So what has, and, if that, and up to the late 60s, the Delta really wasn't under a great deal of stress. And the stress started increasing from the 70s till now. And then it got accentuated during the, two, the early part of 2000 when there was, when there was a continuing expansion of the pumping. Now, what, what has taken place there? It's not just the pumping. You've had extreme population growth in, in the eastern part, around the rim of the delta. You've had, a, you've had discharges into the delta. You've had script ship activity that's changed things. So, if you look at it in a vacuum and say, we just want to put an isolated conveyance in, and not deal with all the other stressors that are out there and, have, and share the obligation, have we really solved the problem other than meet the needs of a dedicated few? And I think, I think that's part of the discussion that has to take place when you talk about whether you go after flood control, water quality, water reliability, and then, the preser and then preserving and enhancing the Delta, which is part of the app. And I don't, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm from my, from my experience in the legislature coming back to here, I still don't think the, the discussion is broad enough to share the, to, to be able to share the burden of what we're trying to do. When you say the, the discussion's not broad enough, you mean? I don't think we're including all parties that are contributing to the problem that need to adjust what they do. Okay, I agree with you. And, and until you do that, some are going to be feeling that they're being sacrificed for a, a particular interest versus everybody facing up to the problem. And water reliability, the legislature also recognized in the act, was reduced reliance on the delta. So people can't be expecting what yesterday's status quo was, but neither can people who discharge continue to think that ammonia can be diluted without taking some responsibility to address that problem. And 
that goes too for the agricultural interest that are involved, not only within the delta, but are part of the tributaries that flow into the delta. And I don't think we're fully assessing the responsibilities to do that. Now we're still we're talking about a 50-year plan to be implemented, and we're talking about a, the potential of the BDCP that may not be implemented for 20 years. So, are there things we could share the responsibility for that even over that same time span becomes economically feasible that has that contributes to the overall benefit of the environment and ecosystem of the Delta that also contributes to the other things that we have to worry about, such as flood control, people protection, and as well as wild reliability. 